imagine your, your, your bait is, say, you know, the length of this, our whole classroom away. So you've got to angle. Whenever, if I'm vertically fishing a drop shot, let's say that on a 12 inch leader, the bait's 12 inches off the bottom, that's where the fish are, are wanting the bait to be presented at. Well, if you make a cast and you're dragging it, I want to go to a little bit longer lead, like an 18, 20 inch leader, because all of a sudden it's at an angle. When you put that angle on it, it's still a foot off the bottom. So if you take a 12 inch leader and you put this angle on, all of a sudden it's only a couple inches off the bottom. Does, everyone, does that make sense to everybody? So depending on how you're fishing it too, um, is how you want to adjust your leader. Um, talk about weight sizes, um, most of the time, kind of like flipping, I feel like a lot of times if I can get by with a lighter weight on a drop shot, I'm going to get more bites. Um, just allow, it allows the bait to just look natural. You don't want to put a whole lot of motion into it. If you put a heavy half ounce weight on it, um, it's like you're moving a brick half the time by the time it gets stuck in every little rock or gravel or just anything in general. You're constantly moving and the worm's just going crazy. I want something I can just drag real lightly and just kind of drag on the bottom. Um, the only time I'll really go to a heavy weight is if it's extremely windy and I just can't keep it down and the waves are too big or I'm dropping on them using my electronics and I feel like, and even at that, like I feel like I don't get the bites catching them off my electronics with a bigger weight. I mean, it seems like they want that real finesse lighter weight if I can get away with it, but at times if I have to, if they're extremely deep, I'll use a half ounce to get it down there to them. Does everyone follow me on that? So lighter is better, absolutely, if you, if you can get away with it. So, next slide. Okay, now here's the baits. Um, this bait right here has been the killer. Uh, this is a Yamamoto shad shape worm. I'm grab a couple of these for you. You guys can pass them around. I can find them. I got a hook in my hand. Not for you. You don't get to see these. <laughs> well, there's one to throw around. I've probably got a couple more in there, but check that thing out. What, what makes that bait unique? We talked about the Senko earlier having the salt impregnated in the plastic, right? Well, same with deal with that shad shape worm. It's salt evenly distributed through it. So when it's on a slack line down there and you've got it nose hooked and you're letting go, or you're just dragging the thing, it's got an evenly distributed shape and it, it doesn't want to dive or, or it's going to have that little shimmy to it. And that's what's key about those baits. And once again, the fish don't want to let go of those things. They'll hold on to that little shad shape worm for their life, no different than they would a Senko. It's really hard not to hook one. Um, another thing that uh, Another bait up there that's been extremely effective is a lot of gulp plastics. I mean, for some reason, fish like really like gulp attractant. So I'll take almost all of my plastic, and uh, that's the Berkeley gulp juice. I'm sure you guys have seen that stuff before. Almost all of my plastics, even my tubes, when I come up there, it's the most stinky, nasty thing ever. But I will take and pour all that gulp juice into my bags of whatever I'm fishing. Because I feel like that might be that little bit of difference because I know how much they like that stuff. It's something I do that just I feel like might give me a little bit of an edge. I saw I talked earlier about how scents don't matter. I think someone was talking about that. Small mouth, I do. I, I really do believe that it does matter with them. Large mouth, maybe not so much, but with them, those little finicky small mouth, I, I believe it does make a difference. So soak them in some gulp, and the, the, the Yamamoto plastics will really soak that stuff up too. You'll be able to see whenever you, whenever you put some of that stuff on there. But uh, other than that, the Seiko is extremely effective on a drop shot. I typically wacky rig it. I mean, I, when I say wacky rig, I know most people probably know, but I'm rigging the bait in the middle, okay? I like to use an O-ring, but here's one thing I want to stress about the O-ring. It's great, you save a lot of baits, you know, like, because if you put a rubber O-ring, they make a tool, it's called a wacky O-ring uh, tool, and you can put the O-ring over the, over the Senko, and it's sweet because you can catch a ton of fish and never lose the bait, never tear the bait. As long as the bait doesn't fly off the hook, you can keep catching fish with it, right? Um, and if you just hook the Senko just without the O-ring, it's about good for one fish, and they're going to tear it off every single time. But here's the difference. If I'm fishing for money, um, I won't go with the O-ring. Reason being, whenever you rig, imagine my arm is the Senko. That's you, folks. Information is pouring over. If you want to learn more about every lake, how to fish shallow, deep, in between, skipping docks and rocks and cranking, slow wiggling, chatter smattering, you get it at Bash U. Get on Bash U TV, check it out, sign up, be a member, be part of it, folks. Keep learning.